Welcome to the Calm Part Collective. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Combat Collective, bringing you everything you want to know about the 2021 BattleBots season. This is our prediction episode for the seventh week, the seventh episode of BattleBots here. A uh, very fascinating set of matchups here. Um, some proper coin flips. Just look at the main event here. Uh, two robots that we know have been proper uh, juggernauts during the Discovery era of robot combat. Um, both Scorpius and Whiplash are going to put on a hell of a fight. But that was some interesting stuff coming up with their modifications. Unique modifications for them. Also, unique modifications for Slamo and Switchback are likely to be expected um, in the YouTube exclusive. Another fight with some unique setups, of course. Huge versus Retrograde. Retrograde looking like a completely different robot, while Huge now using the Tegris wheels. We'll be talking about all of this and more in our BattleBots prediction episode. I'll be joined along by Mr. Redman and Porin Nog as usual. So let's jump into the episode here. Of course, if you like what you're doing here, please subscribe, please comment, please let everybody know about the Combat Collective, and of course, please follow us on Instagram or on Facebook. You can find those in our dis in our description here below, and in our link tree, you can find our Discord community. Feels please feel free to join that. We update everyone about videos as soon as they go up, even quicker than we do on our Facebook or on our Instagram. And uh, for yeah. Stay tuned here. Uh, we always post some more videos and hope you enjoy the episode. Start off our week of predictions here with our very first fight and a fight that I personally know for quite a while here and a fight that I can admit a little nervous about. I am a little nervous about this fight. I do remember the idea, but um, it's Sub-Zero and I got the thing right here. I got my poker chip. I'm full support. I got my banner. I, I'm going to put the decal on my little banner thing. And like I said, since the beginning of the season, Sub-Zero... We're going to win BattleBots. I know we had a, a bit of a rough, a bit of a rough first fight there against Shatter. Weapon didn't work, all that good stuff. Um, but the drive looked fantastic. We survived even after a battery fire because we're Sub-Zero. We're cool as ice, and we can't be stopped that easily. And uh, now we take on Bloodsport, who uh, have announced on social media already they are going to be using the classic style Bloodsport weapon with the two long ends with the two short ends on the other end. Kind of like a Kylo Ren lightsaber. I don't know how to describe it. Anyway, um, Bloodsport taking on Sub-Zero here. And uh, Sub-Zero is going to dominate here. Let's be real here. It's going to be... We saw Bloodsport get stuck on its head last round against Whiplash. And it's just... It's going to happen again. That's the only way this fight goes down. And uh, I, I'm nervous. I will admit I am nervous. But I will not be eating Subway at the end of the season. No Subway no, will be no, ate no, by me. No, no. no should, Subway will be probably, ate by me. You should probably start... You should probably start planning your subway order on Thursday, you know, because when you're yeah, at 0-2, I think it's going to be no turning messy. back at that point. It's Look, got to be a messy one. Meat no, I'm all, not. You know? I'm not eating no nasty Meat sandwich. Ball, I'll eat well, nasty wearing, sandwiches at the firehouse. That oh. white t-shirt better be as white I'm as Sub-Zero. I'm not a bookbang channel. Sub-Zero is going to be turned red this fight. Bloodsport, no chance against it. Like I, As much as I love Sub-Zero, and they're a fantastic team, I've heard so much great stuff about them and i hope they keep doing well i just they don't really I, I just don't think sub-zero has that durability against um a, a spinner like Bloodsport. They, they i mean blood sport managed to Valkyrie. tear apart yeah but blood sport managed to rip apart whiplash who's one of the more durable machines out there we could beat whiplash of... sub-zero could beat whiplash sub-zero <laughs> oh, okay. no, yeah okay okay <laughs> buddy. all right Oh, just yeah. wait. Oh, I'm just, I'm just keeping it 55th Street. Um, Sub Zero is gonna get gutted alive, honestly, and you're no. gonna have to be some way. I'm sorry, dude. Look, also, I'm really sorry, but we also you know. could have a really good, really good spirited round three performance that keeps us in the playoffs. If no if shot, no chance we lose this. No shot. I'm not. You eating. got bodied in your first fight. You're gonna get bodied in your second we, we, fight. We, we, we hold you might win the third one. We held our own. We might win that third one. It's going to be a battle that, but... of one and ones, hijinks and sub zero, and that fight's going to be great. Sub zero is going to win. They wouldn't have that fight if it was zero and two versus no. one on one. Man, 
man. Yeah, I, 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 I don't. I feel like we're, we're gonna go. We're gonna be going around in circles here. Like, I don't. I don't. As much as I feel like, uh, like, Quirt fans and Bronco boys want their Sub Zero to win. I don't think that it's going to win against such a well now seasoned uh, robot, uh, which is Bloodsport. Yeah. They've really come into their own sh- uh, into their own um, now ever since they first competed, and they're one of the more uh, like um, exciting rookies, I have to say. Really. We can't really say that anymore since they've been uh, in at least uh, this is the third season now, right? So yeah, yeah. Um, Bloodsport is by no means a uh, rookie machine. They know what they're doing. They've gone into um, every fight being at least somewhat of a threat. And it's just great to see them around and compete. And unfortunately, I, uh, as much as um, we want Sub Zero to potentially win, I think that meatball sub is just getting closer. Uh, and, it's not going to be a meatball I mean, sub. Y'all can say whatever it's, you want. I mean, you want to have I mean, ham and cheese from Subway. You are yes. as plain as tofu. I am plain, plain as, as tofu. tofu. Oh my god! I mean, I mean, look at this man. Look at this man's spice shelf with his with his salt and pepper and what? What was the third one? Oregano? Like it's something. This I man doesn't know, know how it's to eat spices. Like, you know? Know. Now I gotta put a picture of that up here. Oh, yeah, the Pavela can't eat the spices. You know, it's just oh, how I it can't is. I believe it. Yeah, just let's. But not put... you know, Sub Zero is like I want Sub Zero to succeed. They're very. They're, it's a very nice team. It's a very cool robot. Yeah. But I also I mean, want to see Cordy suffer and eat Subway, so I gotta have I gotta have blood a, sport. It's such, a double, it's such a painful thing to say, really. It's like we like Sub Zero, yeah. we like their team, but we want it to die so Quirk can eat a sandwich. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, he, has to eat that, he has to eat that meatball marinara with his white T-shirt. <laughs> I'm not and, eating no know, meatball, it's... nothing. I don't even like spaghetti. It's gonna be meatball. It's you're like you gotta put chilies in that. You gotta put like onion like, flakes. Onion? It's got onion? Onion? Yeah, you got that sweet, sweet onion chicken. Teriyaki, man. Exactly. That's oh, really onion. Yeah, yeah. No, I hate onions. This is making um, me upset. I literally put on my Facebook today an article about how much I hate condiments and gooey, saucy things. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. Put in every like condiment it. in that in that sandwich. I'm putting ham, cheese, maybe some. Cardi, when you go to a when you go to a Chinese buffet, are you want people who gets like pizza and French fries. <laughs> <laughs> Not on the entire plate. Chicken no. Nuggies. Not in the entire place. Not the entire place, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. If get it's accessible, I'm going it. to eat stuff I like. But I get the Oriental stuff. I get the orange chicken. I get the peanuts and shit. I get that. Look, mm-hmm. besides the point, Bloodsport's a very good robot. They're coming <laughs> up with a classic blade. Sub Zero probably can be run in the defensive plow configuration. I think Sub Zero has a shot. But I do worry. This is going to be Sub Zero's mm-hmm. toughest opponent. I've been I've known about this fight since mm-hmm. someone told me about it at the taping, and I've been worried. But the wait's over now, and we're going to see what happens. And next week when we open up our news thing, we're going to be playing Chill It Right finally. I know it's been like eight weeks. I, no, I've been saying we're going to play no Chill God. It Right to start the episode. We'll be playing Chill It Right next we're week. Gonna be but... watching, uh, we're going to be watching Bloodsport instead. Mm-hmm. We'll see. You we'll know. see. We'll see. I think mm-hmm. Sub-Zero is going to win. They think Bloodsport's going to win. But uh, it's going to be a good fight <laughs> opener uh, as we move on here to our next fight. Now moving to our second fight here, um, Sub Zero versus Bloodsport might be a bit of a battle, but this one uh, I don't think we can say as much. This is an interesting one. Two fairly recognizable teams, OG teams here. We have of course Team Cobalt from Team Carbide here, and well, captain by Team RDC now, of course. Matt Maxim at the wheel. Uh, 001 taking another 001 robot here, and Ghost Raptor, who pretty much had a wrestling match in their last fight, worked glitch to a win somehow, keeping the robot alive during the whole fight. It was a whole interesting de- ordeal here, but we do know Cobalt likely running the wedgelets during this fight, um, and Ghost Raptor, a very skeletal robot. What are our thoughts on this? Because I don't. This might be kind of ugly. Mm, it's not going to be good for Ghost Raptor by no means. Cobalt is one of the more powerful verts that we, um that exist within the robot combat circuit and i got a rep for um the british here you know because it's fantastic engineering what they did for koba and we saw what it uh, what it could do in its previous season against um uh, in its previous fights it ripped up the floor for goodness sake which is a which i think is a testament for a lot of machines yeah uh, to say 
Um, I mean, it, it tore apart duck as well, and like and that's, that's difficult duck, yeah. to break duck. It's difficult to break such a machine that uh, that's like duck. So for Ghost Raptor to show up, um, basically being made with lollipop sticks, you know, in terms of armor, like it, it, it's just going to be like when it was fighting at Son of Waiachi. It's just not really going to survive. I don't really see how it can defeat Cobalt unless it gets that control game going. But that spinner will get in the way, I think, of its lifter. Yeah. So, um, I don't really see it doing much damage to Cobalt, and I see just goes for. I think it's too bricky for that HS to do anything. Yeah. In a, in a way, I feel like this is this might be a feeder win for Cobalt since it had a yeah. pretty bad loss in its previous fight. So I think this might be a feed. Um, we we'll have to see how it goes, really. Mm. Uh, but Cobalt, I don't really see it losing unless Ghost Raptor does something really impressive, which I'll. Give my hats off to if it is. Yeah, I mean, I would love to see. Go I like I like Ghost Raptor. It's a cool robot, and I mean, it's with peace and love. But uh, this is definitely a match that they booked with the intention of giving Cobalt a win. Like, mm -hmm. I don't see how Ghost Raptor could win this outside of Cobalt having technical issues or like Cobalt getting stuck on like the floor or something. Like, I don't see. I don't see. Ghost Raptor winning this at all. This is all Cobalt all the way. This was a fight a wedge litless Cobalt could have won. Um, yeah, this isn't good at all. Like you were saying, Red, the lifter's just going to get in the way, and that's really the best shot Ghost Raptor would have had in a situation like this. Um, I'm just not buying that horizontal spinner on Ghost Raptor yet. It always seems to die within three hits, and Cobalt in itself is a very compact, very clunky, bit, a real brick of a robot. Um, and the championship credentials are there. I mean, sure, Ghost Raptor, a former semifinalist, but Cobalt's a former champion in China, um, TIFR winner, of course. And it's just such a solid robot. Fantastic driving, of course, by Matt Maxim. And uh, this isn't a robot Ghost Raptor is going to want to keep alive by any means, but I don't think this fight's going to go more than half the distance, like y'all are saying. This is going to be pretty brutal. Real question is how many parts is Ghost Raptor going to be in by the end of it? Because we saw what a bot like Jackpot. Surely a cop that's been in their own right in 2020, but still an early robot at that point um, did. Who knows what Cobalt can do. And now as we move forward to our third fight here, we're talking about uh, Ice Wave versus Deadlift. And um, a very bit of a similar situation to Ice Wave versus Vanquish a few years back. We have a bit more of a proven lifter control bot than Vanquish. Um, obviously, it has a bit of a track record now. It's won against um, Jackpot. It had that contentious match against jackpot recently as well but um deadlift uh still 0-1 to start the year here taking on ice wave a bot that has a history of making use of bots like this um obviously deadlift a bit more sturdy than vanquish we've seen that in the past i'm not saying deadlift is going to get ripped in half here but i'm also not completely buying their success in this match i'm going ice wave here pori i know you're a big deadlifter here you got the big arm big yeah. deadlift arm up up probably displayed like my p1 wheel here but yeah, uh you know. what's your thoughts what's your stance on this because i know you have uh, deadlift here deadlifts win it is 100 percent. because here's the thing ice wave has a good spinner but it doesn't have a great spinner because ice wave is held back by the thing that makes it unique the the the, the bus engine spinner like it's cool and it's unique, but it's never going to be as damaging as, say, a uh, hard-hitting, you know, electric spinner, you know? Like, it's never going to hit quite as hard. It takes longer to spin up. And the one big thing, and this is probably why Redman has has deadlift on it, Ice Wave is not invertible. Ice Wave cannot flip itself back over if it's flipped. And deadlift is durable enough to take a few hits from Ice Wave. And if it gets underneath it, it's pretty much game over. Yeah, I yeah. do worry about that. Um, well, I, I think I, I've said before on this podcast that, um, well, at least I think I have, I think that robots that enter these high-ranking competitions these days, if they don't have the ability to be invertible or self-right from being upside down, they're automatically at disadvantage. Like, I don't feel like they're going to yeah. win a nut. Uh, they're not going to win a nut. If they can't stealth right, if they can't move upside down, and yeah. Ice Wave, while it indeed has that <clears throat> gimmick of it being that, um, you know, gas-powered spinner, I mean, it's it's spin. I think like I 
I, I think they've actually bragged at one point, they're saying that, oh yeah, we've got it uh, now spinning up to somewhat akin to that of an actual horizontal spinner, which I thought, uh, was like, well, okay. Yeah, that doesn't well, sound like I something think... to be proud of. Yeah, it's like, oh, so you, you finally caught up with like electrical motors, and electrical motors have been doing it since like day one. It's like, you, look, you don't need, we don't, you don't need to be, get, uh, you don't need to do it by gas. You just, but I guess Ice Wave needs it for the gimmick. I think that front plow, those side weapon, uh, those sides are pretty t uh, going to be tough to uh, break apart there. I, I just don't really see Ice Wave winning this. Um, I think Ice Wave is one of those um, horizontal spinners that might actually be dated in terms of uh, design so far. Though it could win and be like, yeah, sure, good job, Ice Wave. You're still in it. But um, then again, I wouldn't be surprised if it lost. Yeah, that's my only big worry about this fight right now is just that um, the fact is Ice Wave is, is not invertible. That's always been a big thing. And just like Captain Shredder, I think that's going to be something that will inevitably affect it. At some point in the season, I certainly don't think they're going to win the championship here. But Deadlift did not take those impacts from Jackpot in that first round very well. And I know that these front plow wedges are more designed for the horizontal spinners, but I just haven't seen the cumulative damage add up on Deadlift yet for it to prove to me that... Um, you know, it's a robot that can survive these impacts and go long in the fights. Uh, you know, if it wins this, it's the biggest win of its career, um, especially if it wins it handily. But uh, I do wonder if they're going to run the, cra the clamping arm because I feel like that's going to be something that Ice Wave could really take advantage of. Uh, if I'm with them, if I was them, I'm keeping it to like the 2020 style deadlift like they did in their last fight. Uh, but I don't know. They could try to go for clamping the um, internal combustion engine housing of ice wave it's going to be fascinating to see but like a lot of people were saying deadlift uh, is winning this fight a lot of people were also saying vanquish was winning that 2018 fight and obviously that was when vanquish was coming in with zero known fight history so i can see that a bit it's not it's not the fullest it's not the most one-to-one -one comparison but i'm not completely sold on deadlift i definitely think it's going to be an ice wave victory right here um but it's going to be, on, man. I, if Ice Wave makes one screw up or Deadlift gets one good charge, it's going to change it. So I'm going to have to go like 80-20 ratio for Ice Wave. I have a question, Cordy. Yes. How are you going to think that, that Sub-Zero is going to beat Bloodsport, but you don't think that, that Deadlift will beat uh, Ice Wave? Well, you see, Ice Wave is a very powerful horizontal spinner. Bloodsport is like twice as powerful right? I know, I know I just want to hear your reaction to that word um, Because I like Sub-Zero That's why and I'm going to be honest with you Why don't I you like okay, 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 okay. Why don't you like Deadlift then? Because you're cheering for it <laughs> Wow Wow, okay. you heard it here folks There's some here I love Deadlift I love, all the I love most every team In BattleBots um, He's like, it's... I love Deadlift, but I don't love you. <laughs> yeah, you guys give me literally this exact reasoning for last time why you said you didn't want Sub Zero to win. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Y'all are no. Fellas. I respect that. I respect that decision. Here's a. Let's move on here though to a fight I think all of us can agree with in our midway major. Jumping into this next one, it is our midway major though. It's not the most major. Uh, midway fight we have here. It's a bit of an interesting one. I certainly would have thought it would be Copperhead versus Fusion, but I digress. We're talking about Blip versus Overhaul here. Um, Blip's going to have its way with Overhaul here. I think we can all agree on that. Uh, it's going to be rough, though. Overhaul, of course, it's just frustrating. We have seen, we've seen Equal Zero Design show off this robot for um, two years now, and I'm so excited to see it get a chance to really perform here. Maybe we will against Blip, but... Um, I feel like it's a really angular, very awkward robot for Overhaul to try grabbing. But in turn, Overhaul is also a very slippery built robot with its large wheels, its high ground clearance, um, its quick forks. So it might be tricky for Blip. It's certainly you know, rusty in terms of easiness to flip. Um, I think it's going to go three minutes. Overhaul might be getting a lot of air miles here. Um, might be very similar to like... Cobalt versus Duck without all the damage, just Duck getting thrown all over the place. Overhaul getting thrown all over the place here. Um, Blip, of course, 1 0 with the Rusty win. Overhaul getting a very different opponent in Ribot. 0 and 1 after a very rough performance. It didn't do much in terms of movement at all. Uh, what are our thoughts on this one? It's a battle of two blue robots here. Hmm. Um, I'd say that this is going to be. This might go the distance, um, though. 
Um, it's another fight where we get to actually see Blip do something. Um, and Blip, ever since his first fight, um, it's a phenomenal flipper. It's a fantastic machine, and seeing it have such explosive power, I mean, goes to show how many ways you can make a flipper exciting, you know? Mm-hmm. First it was Hydra doing um, doing it with its hydraulic flipper, and now we've got this what, centrifugal force flipping machine. It's just... It's so unique. It's, a, it's, it's, so, it's, a, it's like a catapult, really, and, mm-hmm. and it's fantastic just to... Um, Year about it, and I'd love to see it. Could be uh, to see it win really against Overhaul, but I like seeing Overhaul. I like seeing it perform well. It had a uh, didn't really do well in its previous fight. Uh, obviously, didn't use the right um, uh, setup. Uh, right front setup. Configure- yeah, yeah. It didn't really have to use the right configuration against the spinner there. But this fight, it should have a much more um, uh, easier, I suppose, easier time of fighting up against Split. Though I think it does really come down to the ground game really um and who can get underneath who better and i think blip due to its size um yeah. and those sports I, I think yeah yeah and those four, i think you'll have a easier time of getting under overhaul overhaul getting under blip especially if the left, lifting um plan for overhaul gets bent in a way so yeah i, I want to say it's blip for me but it may go the distance just depends if the shelf is actually used this is definitely shelf worthy, but um, yeah, yeah, but... yeah. Go I ahead. think it's. Uh, I think it'll definitely. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a blip victory. I, it's gonna be very difficult for Overhaul to win. It. I mean, maybe they, maybe they will. I mean, you know, it, if they drive it perfectly, I could see Overhaul maybe taking it. Or if I guess if Blip has like technical difficulties, maybe. But I. I think this is Blip's fight through and through. Yeah, there's just not much Overhaul can do here. I mean, the only thing I could see it realistically doing is, you know, there's that wheel housing on each side of Blip, you know, get a good clamp there, lift it up. But then what are you going to do with it? Blip's going to be fine, you know, depending on no matter where you plan it. It's all you can throw it out of the arena anymore. They'd probably do something about that, you know. You know they said they want to make lifters more competent, but I feel like it's the one robot that can't get away with stuff in terms of out of the arenas. I digress, though. Um, you know, Blip's just so nimble, so compact, even compared to Overhaul, which is also a fairly compact robot. Blip's so small, so quick. Um, it's just going to be really hard for Overhaul to get a good clamp, a good bite anywhere. Um, I do think it is going to go distance, though. I think we're going to see the real durability of Overhaul here. I mean, it was a bit of unfortunate showing, of course. It wasn't really Overhaul dying as much as it was that front system that they had on Overhaul getting bent inward. Uh, which hopefully won't be an issue anymore. Apparently, Overhaul wasn't too savvy on the modularity rules of BattleBots. Um, at least since since their last appearance in 2018, they weren't. Um, so they didn't have the most optimal setup going into the robot fight, uh, and they said that that's on them, and they, that's something they, that, that they just messed up on. Kind of like the hijinks oversight. It just comes with round one fighting. Um, completely new slate here, though, for Overhaul. I think it will survive for a full three minutes, but... Offense will be at a minimum, I think, for them. And now moving on to our fifth fight here. Huge is back in action after a disappointing round one matchup against Riptide. Hopefully we can actually see them gather square this time, taking on another brand new robot to the season this year, a robot making their Discovery debut. We saw them fight against uh, Rampage in a quick knockout on um, YouTube, of course. So it's 0-1 Huge against the 1-0 Retrograde here. Another surprising robot to see, uh, 1-0 against an 0-1 robot. (laughs) But um, Retrograde, the big topic here coming from Retrograde, a lot of big changes made to the robot for this fight. It looks like they're going to be ditching the Undercutter completely, at least I would like to imagine it, because buckets of top armor and side armor on this robot for this fight. Modularity, definitely a key thing here. Um, We'll have the picture up right here, of course, but just looking at the robot itself, new front plow looks like, covering both the front wedgelets, kind of like a fork thing. Side armor that might be UHMW. Looks like it might be a bulkier lifting arm, but that might not be true. And of course, the big thing here, two top armor panels, something similar to what Bronco had against Huge. Uh, looks like they were especially made for a fight like this, something that they had prepared on deck. So good to see that uh, the bns team of course as prepared as usual um aaron lucas the captain of retrograde has a very complex bot here we're, we're gonna really get to see it in action here we didn't get to see much out of both these robots last time a bit like the uh the the defender versus riptide fight beforehand you know 
that was the first time we really got to see those bots do stuff. And this will be the first time we get to see these guys do stuff this season. And uh, upgrades to huge as well. Due to the due to the way they got stuck this year with um, the white wheels getting stuck in the brand new screws with the, uh, from what I believe they said is the bumper slots ended up getting them stuck. They're going with a sturdier wheel now. So they're doing the black Tigris wheels that we saw them run in the bounty tournament. So both these robots making some big changes for this event. Um, what are y'all's thoughts on this matchup? Mm. Um, this fight, uh, clearly Retrograde has gone for a much more controlling strategy over Huge, which I think in terms of history so far, when you want to beat Huge, um, that may be the way to go about it, since Huge is by uh, no means a pushover. It's a very durable machine, especially with those plastic wheels. It's difficult to rip it apart. I don't think we're really going to get another huge versus ice wave situation again where the robots split in half because I think at this point they probably looked at that and thought, that's our biggest issue. How are we going to fix that? And at yeah. this point, I can't really see them having that kind of ability. Like I think like the only real way you can really damage or destroy huge is if you hit the module, which you need some kind of overhead weapon to do so, mm -hmm. or you control it. Uh, since Huge is notorious, really, for having uh, a lack in um, traction and um, talk. It just doesn't really have drive power. I mean, if you can get it with a uh, lifter, if you can get it with a uh, coat hanger, you, you could really just move Huge wherever you want to. And I think that's what Retrograde is trying to do. Retrograde is going to manhandle Huge around the arena, stick it where it's going to get stuck, and Huge can't escape because the wheels do have a tendency to get stuck. Yeah. Uh, I do worry a little bit about the wheels, but I think the Tegris might be a good change. Jonathan Schultz seems to know uh, more about the, those wheels than anybody else. Um, my big worry is, well, will that retrograde arm hold up? You know, uh, It obviously looks like a very sturdy arm, but if that thing gets even bent a little bit, uh, made a bit just a little just a little irrelevant in terms of fight condition. Uh, it might be a big issue for retrograde, uh, especially because they have a robot. You know, looks like they don't have the undercutter for this fight. Not that it would do much anyway. Um, I, I have I worry about their ability to do damage in this fight. Mm. Yeah, I uh, I probably have huge in this just because huge can do a lot of damage with that spinner if they. Yep, to speed, but I'm not kind of completely count out retrograde. I am definitely betting yeah. on huge, but uh, retrograde could do it. I mean, it just depends how well they drive the fight. I mean, that that lifter could theoretically like get into like the holes of huge's wheels, and oh, I didn't even think about that. You're control right. Control it that way. Like that's what I would probably do if I was in this scenario. No point in going weapon on weapon or anything. You get around to the sides, get into the holes of the wheels, and attempt to control that way i don't know how strong that lifter is but maybe try to get a lift that way i i don't know um it got ra it got rampage over pretty handily didn't it hmm. i mean yeah, i know it's, yeah, a, I know it's a different is, i know it's a different geometry a yeah thing. but at the very but, least they can easily control it if especially if they get both yeah. prongs right in there yeah I, I th if they just get into the if i just get into the wheels they will have an easier time of controlling it because it, i don't think i don't really because those wheels are like a big weakness on huge. They're like the they're its yeah. greatest strength and greatest weakness, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's going to be fascinating to see what retrograde can do in this. It's gonna be a very interesting situation. I got to lean towards huge as well, but you know, looking at a lot of these matchups on the card here, there's a few uh, real coin flips here. You know, fights like Copperhead versus Fusion, Whiplash versus Scorpius, um, Bloodsport versus Sub Zero, and uh, you know. Huge versus Retrograde, I would put up there with all three of those fights. It's it's going to be fascinating to see what the result ends up coming out. Uh, a fairly unique matchup as we now move on to a matchup we've known for quite a while and a matchup I'm surprised is not a main event. And of course, this is a fight we've been talking about a little bit on the TCC 10 episodes because both these robots lately have been sitting around the bottom of the TCC 10 countdown, um, just waiting for their next fight. And their next fight has now come. Fusion versus Copperhead, we've seen this in the trailers before. Uh, this is a fight I really thought was going to be a main event or even a midway major, but judging by its placement on this card, fight number six here, uh, makes me think this is going to be a bit of a quickie. Uh, of course, I'm not discounting the fight itself. These are two proper heavy hitters now. Copperhead, of course, Copperhead, of course has been very good in the past um, season and a half now that it's been competing. Looked really good. High seed the playoffs last year. 
um, dominant split decision victory in the uh, fight against Lockjaw. I guess it kind of contradicts itself. It looked very strong in the split decision victory against Lockjaw. Well, Fusion, of course, undoubtedly dominant after a rough 2020 season. Um, embarrassed Cobalt, who we talked about earlier in the episode, made the former champion look like a, a, a jobber bot, frankly. So this is going to be a real clash of the Titans here. Big impacts, probably not going under, not going past a minute and a half. What are y'all's thoughts on this fight? Hmm. Uh, this this is going to be an explosive battle. I I can see it going either way, really. Both robots are these dense bricks with powerful weapons. Though I'd say that uh, Fusion has the weaponry edge since it's got two weapons to utilize. Um, though it de- entirely depends, I think, who and who's got the the best wedge game and who's got the best bite, really, because I can see Copperheads. Um, tearing apart fusion, but I can also see fusion ripping into Copperhead. So it, I, it could be yeah. anyone's guess, really. So yeah, I want to go for Copperhead because I really liked how Copperhead performed against uh, in its main event. But fusion would also be a welcoming win. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's this is a fight I'm probably the least confident about where it's going because this could really go either way. I'm inclined to think Copperhead probably has it, but I wouldn't count Fusion out right away. Um, it's going to be a close one, but yeah, I'm just going to say Copperhead, but Fusion could definitely pull off the upset. My big thing is that Copperhead's weapon is just so fierce, and there really isn't much that Fusion can hit, because, you know, it's it's probably not going to damage those brazil wheels too much and no otherwise what they're gonna hit the weapon like weapon on weapon contact i'm pretty sure copperhead likely wins for sure especially either of those weapons and fusion's burnt look really good it's just a bigger weapon on copperhead and uh and also it's like this is a uh sort of a rivalry grudge match too because you know you have poison you had copperhead south and now this is basically Fusion's kind of like the successor to Son of Waiachi in a way. So mm-hmm. this is kind of like settling the score between the two. Like, which one wins more between them? Right. It is a proper battle. I like these rubber matches. We were talking about that actually on KOD the other day. Uh, sort of Team Waiachi has a few of these weird, like, best out of three matches where they never have fought uh, the same bots twice. Like with Team Nightmare, they had Son of Waiachi versus Nightmare, and then they had Warrior Clan versus Nightmare, and then they had Breaker Box versus Falcon. Uh, and now mm-hmm. we have this one with Caustic Creations, um, you know, 2016, Poison Arrow versus Son of Wayashi, 2019, um, Copperhead versus Son of Wayashi, and now this year, Copperhead versus Fusion. It's a uh, just shows the history behind the Wayashi franchise and their whole family dynasty that they have going on there. But of course, Caustic Creations, a robot, a team that has it's their own history in the past decade as being a top drum team uh, in multiple weight classes, and Copperhead's been no exception, of course, with the success they had. Uh, in 2020, and I have to lean with the uh, y'all here as well. Copperhead, my pick to win this one. Um, it just has a better track record for consistency. Fusion uh, looked really good in that Cobalt fight, but it also didn't take too many hits. And once we really see it take hits, I think we're going to start seeing uh, what Fusion's skin really is like here. Uh, and there's a lot mm. can go wrong in Fusion, and we know Copperhead in the past has had some drive issues, but I just I think that. In terms of reliability, and that's what this sport's all about, this is what this is Copperhead's win. But this is definitely a fight that's going to be decided within the first three hits, I think, and a fight that's going to be over in less than a minute and a half. Moving on to our seventh fight here, our YouTube exclusive. It is Switchback versus Slamo, a battle of two robots who start with the letter S to have. Had a bit of a rough performance in their very first fight here. Of course, Slamo opened up episode three getting mollywopped by Hypershock which was a bit unfortunate. They really just couldn't get out of the gate after um, some of those first opening impacts. But now that we've seen, uh, in last week's episode, Hypershock is no joke. That was no fluke of a fight. Um, Slamo with a tough draw here. A bit of an easier draw. Uh, taking on Switchback, a robot we haven't seen since the very second fight of the season. Um, you know, who knows what changes they're going to make. Probably a heavier weapon, I'd like to imagine, um, against a more, a less damage-oriented bot like Slamo. They're probably going to try coming down on those um, forks, or at least make an attempt to. But Slamo, alternatively, might be running a defensive setup. We know both these robots super modular in their own right, so unique to see what setups they are going to be running against one another. 
What is unfortunate, though, is that this does appear to be a YouTube exclusive fight, so who knows how the quality of it might end up going. Hopefully, we'll see something more along the lines of a jackpot deadlift than a, a SME versus a Deep Six. That was just rough last week. But, uh, yeah, what are our thoughts? This is a bit of a strange one, a battle of Omen Wands trying to stay uh, in contention here. Yeah, um, it's an interesting matchup that I really didn't think about. Like, I, was, I never thought, like, oh, what have these two fought? But, um... It should be. It, it could go either way. I feel. Um, I want Slamo to win, but I'm kind of thinking Switchback is gonna manage to do it. Um, just reason being that, while Switchback definitely has its demons to work out, and uh, it had teething issues in its first fight, that weapon still does seem to hit pretty decently, and Slamo does have a lot of a lot of things that you could hit with that deadly spinner and do a lot of damage to theoretically. I do think that this is going to probably be a somewhat fast fight. Um, oh, yeah? Like, yeah, a somewhat fast fight and uh, it, yeah, I think it's also going to partially be due to whichever robot having like gremlins in it. I think that's going to play a large role in it. Like, I don't think it's going to be like Slamo suplexes switchback or switchback blows Slamo apart. I think it's gonna be like they're gonna exchange a hit or two, and then like one of them's just gonna have issues and not work. But I'm gonna probably lean towards switchback, but I would love for Slamo to prove me. Yeah, I have to agree with Pori there. I mean, it's already a YouTube fight, so you can already tell that it's not gonna be um, a fantastic match. I I don't think it's going to be anything like Smee versus Deep Six. I don't think anything can really compare to Smee versus Deep Six. That was rough. Six. Well, that's the worst fight um, of the year. Nothing can. Nothing can. But, um, saying that, I think this fight is probably going to involve um, one, uh, one or both machines uh, facing their gremlins, um, and it, the fight's pretty much going to be uh, either quite boring or it's going to be very clean cut. I don't think that um, Switchpack will take the win on this one. As much as I like Switchpack and I think it's a very powerful design, I think it's a, it's fragile, surprisingly, I think. Uh, I mean, in its fight against Gruff, it did much damage to itself than it did to Gruff itself. Um, maybe against Slamo, it, uh, it destroying Slamo isn't actually that durable, and it wins. But I just think that switchback in itself is just a it's, it's an untested machine, and in itself, I think it's also quite a fragile machine. And I think it's going to really break itself on one or two hits, and it will lose. And Slamo will get that uh, win probably by not doing that much. But we'll see how it goes. Maybe yeah. even lifts over switchback, and switchback can't self right. Mm, that's another good one that might happen. Yeah, for sure. Um, <clears throat> my my thing is a. Uh... Alternative for Pori, I think this is going to go three minutes. I think it's going to be a bit of a snoozer. Um, I think that we are either going to see, we're probably going to see Switchback not be able to get much buy on its um, opponents. Because um, I think Slamo, the way it's built, the way Switchback arm is, I don't think there's anything really internal in Slamo. Switchback is going to be able to hit to do some damage. They can go to town on the forks all day, potentially, and they might they might knock those weapons out early. Who knows? But um, I don't think Slamo is going to get knocked out by Switchback by any means. But I also don't think Switchback. Could get knocked out by Slammo. Obviously, they have the side riders now, so that's not as much of an issue. Um, but we did see in the last round um, switchback swipping breaking down, so there is a chance to see this happen. Uh, all Slammo really needs is to tip it over, like you're saying. But I think it's going to go three minutes. I think it's going to underwhelm. But ultimately, I think Slammo is going to get this on control just by shoving switchback around. But it's a bit of a coin flip, but like a handful of these fights. Um, it could really go either way. It depends a bit on luck. Uh, it depends a bit on adaptability and modularity, like I was talking about at the start of this little bit here. But um, I definitely have to go to Slamo just on the veteran experience, probably for me. That's a big intangible. And now, as we get to the end here of another fight card, fight card seven, it is time for our main event. Uh, it's for, it's time for two robots that we have we've talked about a good bit that we haven't seen a lot of. Getting their second fight of the regular season here, we're talking about Whiplash versus Scorpius. Um, battle of two overhead style weapons. We're going to see a lot of judo fight style in this. Uh, we were hoping it was going to be a battle between two kind of spinner style robots on arms, but we just saw, um, we'll have it right here, 
Uh, from five pictures, it looks like Whiplash once again running without their uh, their vertical spinner, going full defense, which you know it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense to do that in the Bloodsport fight because you know it's Bloodsport. You got to be a tank, but for the Scorpius fight, like I get that. Like you know, maybe they're worried about that. Oh, there's some battle damage right there. Hope the judges don't see that. Uh, you know, maybe they're worried about arm being caught up in the air like that. You know, maybe going weapon to weapon like uh, that one fight in Robot Wars Series 4. Or like Shatter vs. Blacksmith. Um, going axe to axe, kind of. And maybe losing their spinner. So they're just thinking, oh, we'll go defense. Uh, both robots right, rocking deep forks here. Both robots 1-0. and Likely playoff contenders. Even if they do both somehow go 1-2, and maybe later in the season. Um, this is going to be very fascinating to see. But I think the big thing here is that Whiplash, going weaponless, weaponless here, might end up uh, screwing it over. What are your guys' thoughts on this one? Hmm. Both machines are um, pretty scary, but uh, I want to go with Whiplash on this one. I think Whiplash definitely has a decent win against Scorpios, but um, I think this fight may be a, uh, a good comparison, really, between Whiplash versus Sawblaze and Whiplash versus Scorpios. Because, you know, in Whiplash versus Sawblaze, Sawblaze dominated Whiplash. Yeah, um, it ripped it apart and proved itself to be a very potent and scary hammer saw. And if Scorpios could do something similar, then it sh- then it goes to show that it can hold up a gate and compare itself potentially to sort um to saw blades. We'll have to see how it goes. But I don't really know. Um, yeah. Alternatively, I will say to that. Um, yeah. I, well, I, I I didn't think about that comparison. That's a good comparison. Maybe this is why Whiplash did go with the the, the set that they did. Uh, I, I I do struggle with that comparison a little bit because of the setup. Whiplash did run against Sawblaze, which was that really weird. They had the tall front panels, and then yeah, they had, it was a, um, it was, it was a very spinner. it was a very experiment. Yeah, it was a very experimental. I don't think I think they didn't go experimental. They probably would have had a better chance uh, at yeah. winning, like uh, in Behemoth versus Cherub. You know. Yeah, but so that, that was, was the weird modifications you make don't work out. Though I yeah, didn't like so how I that think, behemoth setup looked. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool. But yeah, I think with this one, um, if Whiplash just keeps controlling um, Scorpio, just keeps throwing it about, maybe even gets up on the shelf and actually uses the, uh, uses the shelf, Yeah. then uh, it might go uh, well. But uh, it entirely depends on really, you know, uh, if Scorpio can get the damage out. Because if you damage Whiplash decently and keep up the fight, then it'll win because damage category alone. Yeah, that's that's the big thing for me is it's going to be if Scorpius can just keep racking and hit, 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 hit. Um, and this is my worry during the Bloodsport fight as well. If that fight ended up going three minutes was did Whiplash do enough to get, you know, over that hump? Because sometimes it's, it's a big hump to get over as a control bot. Look at stuff. Just look at Kraken versus uh, Hijinks last week. I think uh, even though it was 50-50 in battle bots, you can make the argument that in a lot of other... Um, competitions for robot combat that that's a, that's a crack and win you know take that robo games take that to robot wars take that to you know china that's probably a crack and win um we might see a very similar situation here whiplash needs to find a way they need to really make use of the upper deck make a use of the corner corrals make use of the pulverizers or maybe even the kill saws in that final minute because this is definitely going to be a three minute fight um i just i have to go scorpius here just because on that merit i think that intangible right there is going to end up being what gives scorpius the win here um, if Whiplash was running their spinner, I would be Whiplash all day, all night, eight days a week. But just because I, I have trouble seeing the judges go Scorpius on the judges' call here. If that's, if that's how it goes, unless this is the most dominant Whiplash win we've ever seen. And we know Zach Lytle's a great driver in his own right. And they are rocking Wedgelets yeah. too. Yeah. Um, I, I was... I was a little more convinced until you told me like five minutes ago that they got rid of the spinner. You're going to have to send me a picture of that because I, I haven't actually seen it. My bad. I'll send it right it. now while you're um, Yeah, but um, I, I I still kind of... I still think that Whiplash has it though because just because of how well they were driven. I mean, they, they really like most more fights than not. Like when they win the fight, they aren't really winning the fight because of the spinner. In some cases, yes, it's like like you could say that with Hydra for sure. But in a lot of their fights, it's pretty much just like it uses it doesn't use the spinner and it dominates. Like with Valkyrie, with 
blood sport. Like, you know, it doesn't really... Whiplash is that it's one to focus on. exception That's fair. to being... A, it's a straight control bot, pretty much. It just has a spinner sometimes when it feels like being spicy, you know? There so, you go. I mean, I feel like... okay. It's a lot more picture, forky, I mean, for I sure. Mean, it's more porky, yeah. So, plus it looks like also they have a. It looks like they probably did it so they could add those little bars on the top of it, um, so that Scorpios can't like oh, karate chop. I, you know, I death, never like, even saw those until did. now. That's a good eye. Those yeah. are good because that's definitely that's probably the response, what it is. You know, we were talking about the response to the Sawblaze fight. That's the response to the Sawblaze fight right yeah. there. We saw just mm-hmm. murder. To, it looks like Kenny Florian put it. They sent him to the shadow realm. We've never seen that kind of damage on Whiplash before. Uh, not even from like a tombstone, yeah. but the way that Sawblaze was able to do, um, it was insane. But yeah, that's actually a really good point uh, because those look like some they're, little they're, chunky they chunks like of metal on the top of there. But will, yeah. that be, will that be with a also, good trade? Sawblaze? Yeah, so I feel like I Whiplash feel like that's wins probably the... why they went vertless. Like they, the bird is, I feel like that's why the bird's gone, just so that Scorpios doesn't do that. Additionally, Scorpios know. looks like it has a really weird blade in this fight. Like you look at it, like it's really oddly shaped. I think, but um, I think it's like just a, it's a, it's a, it's a disc. I mean, it looks like, but it looks like it's shaped weird. Like you know, not that it's like damaged or anything. Just like the. Are you not, the are you sure you're not looking at the blue? In the background, yeah, the blue. In. Oh, you know what? You're right. You're right. I thought that was part of the disc. <laughs> I, I see your mistake. It's very confusing. Though yeah. I, that would be a funky like, looking why disc. Is it this, Super why is it asymmetrical like, like a hammerhead, like a tomahawk. That'd be hype. Yeah. But uh, I digress. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, that's but, um, really... yeah, I think Whiplash. Whiplash is so well driven. I still think they'll have this, but it should be a very good fight regardless yeah. of who wins. That's so good sleuthing on you, Pori. I didn't even notice those, but that's probably exactly why there's no yeah. vertical spinner. Probably. But... My issue now, though, is, like, I think Whiplash wins Sawblaze versus Whiplash if they just had wedges up front. I don't know what they were going with there. I think the whole plan was, like, we're just going to backhand. We're, they, they were trying to out Sawblaze Sawblaze, essentially, in that fight. They were trying to make, like, yeah. go full backhand during the whole fight, like we've seen them go against uh, Polar Vortex in the past. But I'm hypothermia, sorry. Um, yeah, I'm just not sold. I think there needs to be damage done. Um, control just isn't going to do it unless... Like you did say, they do have a bit of an exception for Whiplash, but I just don't know if it'll be enough because I know that they do love their Scorpius as well. Yeah. But uh, I digress. This is going to be a very good fight. Uh, potential, just like a lot of the fights we saw last week to be some of the best fights of the season coming in this one as uh, we now wrap it up here uh, doing our outro here. And that'll do it for us here at the Combat Collective. It's another set of uh, predictions here, given in and given out. Um, huge high hopes for, of course, coming out of me for Sub-Zero this year. I'm really hoping that these guys can pull this uh, big win off against um, Bloodsport, mainly because I don't want to be eating any Subway. I, uh, I passionately dislike Subway. Anyone who uh, knows me on Kiki Draft knows that. Uh, and if you know me on here by now, you probably know that. But I digress. Uh, this has been the episode. Very excited about this week's main event. Um... It's a. It's really going to be a battle of a uh, driving, uh, but I, I just I have trouble saying Whiplash taking it without the weapon. You know, maybe I'm proven wrong. Matthew Vasquez, in my opinion, is the best driver in the world, but we'll just have to see that goes down. Along with that, seven other exciting fights. Can't wait to see what ends up happening. Uh, go Sub Zero, go P1 as well. Whenever they decide fighting again, but uh, that's that's for another week. Uh, as we wrap up here, this has been Sterling Brown. You can find me on Instagram at SterlingTXTG, and you can find uh, me at future projects as well. Um, coming throughout this year, hopefully another podcast down the pipeline. Uh, and along with me, uh, Mr. Redman, of course, you can find him at www.joshuagunnett.com. That's his personal website. And he has a YouTube going under the same name. Uh, and, of course, Pori Nog, the U.S. correspondent, as always, on his YouTube, www.dippyegg.xyz. Uh, you can find all those channels in the description below. Thank you so much for watching another BattleBots Prediction episode. The outro music you're hearing right now is done by Sevalent. Uh We will see you again. This was the Combat Collective. I'm the hardest hard ram and this court.